This is my venerable Farnell dual power supply, the L30DT, a classic of its time. When I say venerable, I've had this unit now for over 40 years, and it was secondhand when I acquired it, shall we say. On each side you have 0 to 30 volts and up to 2 amps. You can either connect the two sides in series to give you 60 volts at at 4 amps, or you can connect them in parallel up to 30 volts at 4 amps. Sadly, this side has ceased to function, so it doesn't uh, generate any volts anymore. This side works perfectly, and although I do have the original instruction book that still has the circuit diagram in the back there, the dates of which are in the 70s, 1971, I think, I think it's time to move on and find myself a replacement. The replacement unit that I've chosen is this Ryden RD6006. has an output of up to 60 volts at up to 6 amps, so it's a good fit for replacing my dual Farnell. It's had some excellent reviews and I'm looking forward to putting it together myself and checking it out. I hope you'll follow me on that journey. Just taking the lid off the box, you begin to get a sensation that things are of really good quality. This doesn't just arrive in a black plastic bag, it has the proper designed and high quality packaging. I've ordered the version with the Wi-Fi card that needs to be installed. And it also comes with a temperature sensor for the power supply. Again, just clicking the buttons and looking at it, it's a really good quality item. I'm reminded when I look at this of my Rigel oscilloscope. It's a similar construction and quality. Again, looking at the internals, you can see that a lot of thought has gone into the layout. Everything is, is marked. There's the temperature sensor connector, for example. You need to put a battery in for the, the memory function. And this uses a CR1220 type button cell. Let's pop that in. The Wi-Fi module goes onto this connection here. It's taking care to line the pins up. That is firmly in place now, and you can see why I put the battery in first, because you can't get to it afterwards. The temperature sensor goes, as I said, into the connection here. There are two fuses in the unit, and they're both in, in holders to make them easily replaceable, which is a nice touch. A spare fuse is also included, along with a couple of spade terminals. Clearly we're going to need a substantial power supply and some form of enclosure and both of those items are available from the same supplier. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the enclosure and the power supplies. The recommended supply is this 400 watt 60 volt 400 watt 6.6 .6 amp supply and it comes sealed in its own little plastic wrap. Again, a very nice looking unit, Co cover over the screw terminals there, and uh, an adjustment for the output voltage. Just make sure that your main selector is for your region. So I'm good at here at uh, 220, 230 volts. Not much more that we can say about that. The accompanying enclosure contains all of the parts that we're going to need to assemble. We have on the back here an on-off switch, power connector and a fan. We have a circuit board that controls the fan with its own temperature sensor, the mains wiring and the wiring that goes to the main control module. I'll go ahead now and get the hardware installed. Finish the assembly now and nothing really too complicated. Just make sure that the fan is this way round so that it's exhausting out of the box. I tidied the extra long wire up with a, with a tie wrap there, which is for the thermocouple to sense the power supply temperature. And I've just stuck that down with some Kapton tape and some thermal paste. The little thermistor here to control the fan is just near, near to the case in, uh, in the free air there. Now time to test the power supply itself. Have the 
the wiring there, a bit too close to the fan. Let's just move that down out of the way. The fan has now stopped. That switches automatically, obviously, as the temperature rises. It'll start off spinning quite slowly um, until the temperature gets up to, I think it said 60 degrees, in which case the fan will come on full. Let's now just check what voltage we have on the output. And it's dead on 60 volts. Now to give the to give the control unit some headroom to enable it to output 60 volts, it recommends increasing this voltage here to 65, which is done by adjusting this potentiometer here. So here we are now at 65 volts. We can see that the device is now working, but let's just switch it off and put the enclosure together properly before further testing. In this video, we're only going to cover the very basic operation because obviously there are many, many things that you can do. To set the voltage, just press the V set and you can scroll through. So changing the voltage up there, let's put it, leave it at five for the moment. And the current sent Similarly, you can set the current limit there. So we'll leave that at two amps, for example. Now, if I switch on, we can see the five volts appear on the multimeter there. If I move, change the meter to the current rating, there we can see the two amp current limit in effect. So that works really well. The other test I'm going to do is using my electronic load. This is set up at the moment for a load of two amps. And this is just the cutoff voltage, which is not relevant for this particular test. Now this guy is the bigger brother of the one that I usually use. And this one's only rated up to 60 watts. But they brought out a newer version, which is this one, which is rated up to 110 watts. If we put that across there now, and let's change the output voltage. Let's go up to say 25 volts. The upper limit on this unit is 30 volts. And at the moment, we've got the current set to two amps. Let's go into here and put that up to the maximum six. We're not going to be able to get anywhere near that because uh, 25 volts at four amps is 100 watts, and this is only rated for 110. So let's see if we can get the magic smoke to come out. So running it now, we can see the two amps that it's set for. If I now start to increase the current, So we're up to three amps there, 75 watts almost. And if we go further, up to four amps, that's nearly 100 watts. And if we try and push it over that, we get to the limit of 110 watts. You could hear it clicking there and the maximum current there at almost four and a half amps at the 111 watts. So that's going to be getting warm now. So let's back it off. So it shows you the flexibility of this system. As I say, there are many other things that you can look at on the display there. The last two things that I want to do in this video are to connect the PC application and also take a very quick look at the app for the phone. The files that you need for the installation manual and also for the laptop or PC application are here on this Google Drive link and as always link in the description. There's nothing to install. The file is an executable, so it should launch immediately into this interface. I have my USB cable connected. It's already detected the COM ports. So all we should need to do would be to connect. 
So now it's the normal pattern, it tells me, and you can see the serial number and the firmware version. As before, I had it set to 5 volts and 2 amps. We can adjust these values, obviously, using the up and down arrows. And also the voltage. And you can see those values reflected on the display there. And obviously, we can switch it on and off and do everything else from this interface here, which is great. At the moment, it's not supported by the, the Wi-Fi card, which is a little disappointing. That only works with the app, in my case, for the Android phone. Just for grins, we'll see if there's an update available. And there is. Shall we be brave? So we can see the message on the screen there, and we can see it downloading the new version. My word, this is exciting. What could possibly go wrong? Firmware update success, it tells me. If I go back and connect now, it is running the new firmware version, which is great. I wonder if they've fixed the Wi-Fi problem. Let's just have a very quick look at that. Go into the menu, enter, move across, change the interface to Wi-Fi, and press the button. Don't forget to do that. Now we reboot. And it's in the Wi-Fi connecting mode. If we go now, I put in my credentials before. No, so unfortunately that still doesn't work for us. Never mind. Now that we have it set up for the Wi-Fi mode anyway, let's just take a quick look at the app. To use our app then, as before, we switch on with the Wi-Fi enabled. I've removed the previous setting so we're back to basics clicking on the app here first we have to set up network distribution and wait for the ip address to appear which it has just done now we can confirm that and it's given us the information that we need okay connect and there we are, we can see the 5 volts and 2 amps that we've set before. We can go in and adjust the voltage, and similarly the current, and switch on. That's interesting. It hasn't set it to 8 volts, that's because I didn't press the set button. So now it's showing the 8 volts. Oh, you had me there for a moment. And a rather interesting uh, graphical display. I don't know exactly how useful this is going to be in reality. But it's another option. I hope you enjoyed all of that.